fact is my father has passed away uh, in front of strangers without the love of his, of his family. June 12th, 1993. Nigerian witnesses is free as a lecture and Chief Moshut Kashimo Abiola is poised to lead the nation. But then, a shocking annulment by General Ibrahim Babangida plunged the country into chaos. Fast forward to July 1998, Chief Abiola in prison for declaring himself president, meet with American diplomats, and minutes after saving a cover fee, collapses and dies. Was this a half attack or something from a sinister? The mysterious death of Chief MKO Abiola is a story we want to unravel in this episode. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another episode of Storytelling with Balabi Media. Yesterday was Democracy Day in Nigeria. And some citizens still don't know why Democracy Day was moved from May 29th, the day it was formally celebrated, to June 12th. This video, featuring an exclusive eyewitness account from Major Abdul Rashid Aliyu, who was present during Chief MKO Abdullah's final hours, we unveil the untold details of that faithful day. We'll talk about the controversies that followed and why Democracy Day is now celebrated on June 12th. And before we go on, Please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to support our research. Chief MKO Abiola was a prominent Nigerian businessman and politician. Born in Ogun State, Abiola rose to ensure prominence through his successful business ventures and philanthropy. On June 12, 1993, Nigeria saw hope in Chief MKO Abiola, who unofficially won the presidential election, which was considered the fairest in the country's history. Despite his victory, the election was annulled by the military government, General Ibrahim Babangida, leading to widespread unrest. Chief Abiola declared himself president and was arrested, spending four years in solitary confinement. On July 7, 1998, the day he was to be released, Chief Abiola met with American diplomats, including Susan Rice and Thomas Pickering, to negotiate his release. Minutes after sipping a cup of tea that she served, Chief Abiola began coughing and died an hour later, leading to nationwide shock and numerous conspiracy theories. Despite all findings, questions about the true cause of his death persist. Do you have any suspicions? At this time, one must only wonder, because only this morning, trusted people saw him alive, full of life. And to be told at four o'clock that he's no longer with, uh, with us is a, sh is a shocking, shocking thing to hear. It's on for an exclusive video featuring Major Abdul Rashid Aliyu, an eyewitness to Chief Abdullah's last moments. This first hand account sheds light on the mysterious circumstances surrounding Chief Abdullah's death. Credit for this video is given to the Nigerian Television Authority, NCA, which was the official broadcaster of the Oputa panel led by late Justice Chukudufu Oputa. Let's hear from the Major. You were present when late Chief Abiola died. Yes, my Lord. Will you please tell this commission all that you know about the circumstances that led to the unfortunate incident? Yes, my Lord. On that day... You remember the date? 7th July, 7th or 8th? Yes. 7th July, July 1998. Yes. An American delegation came to see the then CNC. They were with him at about 2.30. He gave me a call and said, make arrangement for, this, for the delegation to see let Chief Abiola may his soul rest in peace. They were with him, were with the CNC, where? In the villa. That's right, go on. Then I call S. Pizadok, I can see he's promoted. He was inspector then. I call him. Who? S. Pizadok. That's right. I call him and told him to go and prepare Chief Abiola. He is going to see some guests at the usual place, which was Aguda House. I now call the Aguda House, talk to the stewards there, and ask them to prepare the necessary drinks and so on that they used to give when visitors come. 
I waited in the office for the delegation to come out. When they came out, I told the drivers and the then Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, who was with them, Alaji Buhari Bala, that they should go to Aguda House. I will come and meet them there. From there, I went straight to where the late chief was detained. I met Zadok there. We entered the vehicle and started coming towards Aguda House. Zadok you, was you and who and who entered Z the vehicle? Zadok was driving. A bodyguard was staying in the front. Yes. Myself and late chief Abiola was staying behind. When we were approaching our good house. There was a radio call from our control. They requested Zadok should come and open the office of Chief of General Staff. My Lord, you can remember that there was, for within those period, there was no Chief of General Staff because of the situation. And the then Chief of General Staff was just appointed. That was the first day he, was in, he will be in office. And after that coup cool issue, the office of Chief of General Staff were locked up and Zadok was in charge of those offices. So he was holding the keys and nobody had access to the place. So when the CGS came to the place, because he did not tell her he was coming, we were not aware. So not, I did not instruct Zadok to, office, to open the offices. So when he was there, there was a radio call that the CGS is already in the office and he needed those keys. I now told Zadok, okay, when we arrive at the house, go ahead and open the offices while chief will be seeing the, uh, the, the American delegation. When you finish, you come back. By the time we arrived at the house, in fact, he was about going. I said, no, don't go with that car. Which car? The car we came with. What that, car was that, yes? A 504, that car was tinted. It has a tinted glasses because it's specially kept for carrying chief Abiola. And if you go with it and we're taking him back, that means we use a plain car, which was not good. So I asked him to leave that car there, give the BG the key, and take my own staff car and use it to the place in case we finish with Chief before you come back, we'll be able to take him back. He now left to my car. I entered inside with Chief, and we met Thomas Pickering. Go on. Susan Rice, Ambassador Twerel, and Alhaji Buhari Bala, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. When we entered, the exchanges pleasantries, they talked, the chief recognized Thomas Pickering, mentioned how they were made, crack jokes, how they were blamed for planning coup against Murtala, how they were arrested, and so on. He recognized, remember some members of state inside, now, he asked him, How, are you well? He said, yes, I'm well. You can see I'm quite okay, except for this, my swollen foot. Then he said, you see, I walked up this morning. I was not told I'm seeing you people early enough. So I rushed myself in brushing my teeth. Unless that I have some toothpaste maybe hanging around my throat. So they cracked jokes over it, and they sat down. I went to sit just about a meter away from them. Now, at this junction, the steward came in with the refreshment. Put their cups, served them, I uh, wanted to what serve them. What these refreshments? Tea and coffee, tea in one flask, Coffee in one flask. He asked them if they will take. Susan Rice accepted to take tea. Ambassador Twedel accepted to take tea. Ambassador Pickering accepted to take coffee. Chief, let Chief Abiola declined. They were served and the steward left. Then they went ahead on their discussion. After a few minutes, the chief started coughing. Then he said, excuse me. Then they continued again. He started coughing again. After some times, 
the coughing become profusely. He was coughing and coughing and coughing. So Susan Ra says, ah, maybe if you get water or something, it will clear. So he says, yes, okay, he will take the tea. At that time, I stood up from where I was standing. I moved towards the center table to serve him the tea. But Susan Ra has been the only lady there. She served him the tea. And I was standing there watching over her because I also have interest there. I watched when she served in the tea before I went back and sat down. Now, at this juncture, he was coughing continuously. Then he paused, picked the cup, and sipped the tea, then kept it back. After that, the coughing increased. So he stood up and said, excuse me, removed his big gown, went into the toilet, then we can, we, all of us heard him coughing. After about a minute, I was getting worried. So I jumped up. I said, Chief, are you okay? Are you okay? I want to open the door of the toilet. As I was about going in, he was coming out. He was, he looked, he was sweating. He looks tired. I said, what is wrong? What is wrong? He said, please, can they get my cough syrup in the room? I said, sure. So we, we sat, we laid him down on the couch. I went out, told one of the BGs to use the other BG car, not the official car for Chief Abiola, to go and bring his cough syrup from where he was staying. I came in, by the time I came in, as I was coming, he said he was feeling cold. We put off all the S's. Then he said he was feeling heat. We should open the windows. We draw all the curtains and open the windows. At that time, all of us were standing. Everybody was confused. Then Susan and I said, let's get the doctor. I said, OK. I used my mobile phone and called Dr. Wally, the then presidential physician. When I got him, he told me he was within the villa, not in the clinic. I said, come to our good house immediately, we have a VIP on emergency. He said, okay, he's on, he's on his way. We were there, waiting for him to come. Then it occurred to me that, look, I know how this man is in. He may said he will run to the clinic to bring his medical bag. I tried to get him on the mobile. I couldn't get through. So I had to dash out. And I told Alaji Buharibaldi, stay here. So I had to dash out. Enter my car and Roche intercepted him at the junction. He was already going to us as a clinic. I said, No, just come like that. Look at him first. Then we can go with, for the back. He said, Okay. He now turned with the car and followed me. Then we arrived at the place. This took us exactly 7 minutes 40 seconds. When he arrived, he touched his pulse. He looked at him. The chief was lying down. He left the coach. Now he was on the floor. They were fanning him. He was sweating. He was groaning. So he said, look, we have to move into the hospital. Let's call for an ambulance. I said, no, we're not go, going to wait for an ambulance. Let's put him in the car and just go. All of us joined hands, picked chief. As we are doing that, Zadok arrived. When Zadok I said, what is happening? I said, the chief is sick. We now put him in the car. And immediately we started moving. I called the clinic and talked to Dr. Ali, one of the doctors in the clinic. I told him, look, set up the emergency room immediately. Dr. Wally says you set up the emergency room immediately. Get all the doctors, get everybody ready. He's coming with a VIP patient. Emergency situation. He said, okay. And on our way to the clinic, I called the CNC, his direct line. He was not in the office. I was, then I called an officer's mobile. I said, why CNC? He said, he's in a meeting. I said, go and give him inside. He said, he's in the chambers. I said, go and give him the phone. I want to talk to him. So they gave it to him. He said, what is it? I said, the chief is sick. And it's very serious. All of us are confused. We are rushing him to the hospital. Emergency situation. He said, did you get Dr. Ali? I said, yes, he's already here with us. He said, OK, keep me posted. Let me know what is happening. I said, yes, sir. When we arrived at the clinic, we picked him up, took him to the emergency room. All of us moved into the emergency room because the confusion was so high that nobody remembered all this protocol of 
emergency room is only for doctors and so on. All of us were there. The American delegations, the Minister of State Foreign Affairs, myself, the doctor, and everybody was just there. The doctors were doing all what they could. Then I saw the Chief of General Staff arrived at the Asa Clinic in only one car, only him and his ADC driver, no even oddly, without cap. He said, what is happening? What is up? The CC just called me and told me that. So he was like confused. He went in. He was more than said, oh my God, not this, not this hour, not this hour. Then I saw him trying to, a kind of, I was afraid, let you know, if small people like us did that, it's understandable. And when we have our second in command doing that in front of another country people, it will give a kind of impression. So I suggested, sir, it's okay. Why don't you go back? We will sort things out. He said, okay. He went back to his vehicle and left. After some times, I called the sensei. I told him, the, we are still here. The medical team are still working. He said, by the way, do you know whether his family have left? Because his family saw him the previous night. I said, uh, I don't know, but they were staying in Baba Gana King Ibe's house. He said, okay, you get him. If they are there, tell him to bring them, let them come and see what is happening. I go to Baba Gana King Ibe on the phone. I tell him, sir, our guest is seriously sick. He was in the emergency room. The CNC directed, I should tell you, to bring his family as a to come and see what is happening. He said, oh my God. He said, okay, I'll do that. He went, after some times, before Baba Gana came up to me, or before the family arrived, the chief gave up. That, was, that took what time? It took Between the time you got to the clinic and when you were told he gave up? Exactly one hour, 20 minutes. Go on. Now, I now call the CNC. I told him, well, he has given up. Since he said, oh my God, why this hour? Why now? He said, okay, I'm closing the office. You people should meet us at home. And that day he was having a council of state meeting. He was with all the governors. He had, they have to stop the meeting and carry some few governors, his CGS and his service chief, they went straight to the residence. At this time, Susan and I told me that, look, accept our condolences. We have seen all other people have done. I mean, it's, I know it's a great job to you people. Now, is there anything you people want us to do for you? I said, yes. Please give us the privilege of letting the family to know first before the press or the whole world know about it. They said, well, you know, you know our arrangement. We already have pressmen waiting for us at the airport. If we leave, we are supposed to go and give press conference and we'll take off back. So how much time do you want us to give you? I said, well, the family are already on their way. So as soon as they arrive, we're going to tell them, then we can go. They said, okay, is there anywhere we'll sit? I said, let all of us go to the residence. The residence of who? The CNC. All of us left in the convoy. And on our way to the house, I got Baba Gana King giving on mobile again. I told him, well, it's unfortunate. Our guests have given up. And the family, instead of going to Aso Clinic, they should meet us in the CNC's residence. When we arrived there, the CNC and all his services and those were already seated in this room. So we all came. Picker and Twaddle extended their condolences to the CNC and show concern. Everybody, you can see the whole place was quite remorse. Everybody was feeling bad. Then the family arrived. When the family arrived, I took them to a second sitting room. Then the CNC said, oh my God, how can I tell this family? What will I do? Then Susan Rice offered, say, I'm a lady. I will help in this situation. She stood up. The CNC stood up. And one or two of his service chief with the CGS, I can't remember, but they now moved to that smaller sitting room where the family was seated. Then the CNC told them, and Susan Wright and the ambassador uh, said, look, we were there. Everything happened in front of us. And I don't think there's any foul play. He told them that, please accept our condolences, this and that. 
and left. So when they came out, when they came out, they now entered their vehicle and left for the airport. And that was when they gave their press conference declaring what happened. Day in Nigeria was moved from May 29th to June 12th to honor Chief MKO Abiola and the June 12th, 1993 presidential election. Chief Abiola was the presidential winner, but the results were annulled, leading to protests and political turmoil. But in 2018, President Muhammad Dubari changed the dates to recognize June 12th as a symbol of Nigerian democracy struggles and to honor those who fought for democracy. So, you watching this video, do you think Chief Abila's death was a result of foul play or natural causes? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.